God, my, my little sister is ill, and she is pushing out what she got, and I appreciate it, I appreciate it, because normally, what you, maybe y'all don't pick up, but on that one part we do when we do this song, she, she's a lot more vibrant in that piece. She comes in with the, you are. So it wasn't fluffy like that, like it normally, like it normally is, you know. Fluffy, fluffy. And she was, she was still. You are welcome. It just, you know. So again, we think, we think. Um, go ahead and pub publicly, uh, positively deposit into your team members who come and serve on a on a Sunday basis. Um, it won't do you. It won't. It won't do you no harm, but it'll show do you a lot of good. So I got to do some songs, Cedric. That I got to got to bring Sister Gwen in the play. Uh, Lord, my heart is yours. It all belongs to you. I give you all the glory. Yes, I love you. I worship and adore. I'm going to tell you more. Oh, Lord, how much I really do love you. And I love you. Oh, 
have that community cup, which you mean raise your hand so we can get that to you. Everyone. Well, he don't count. He don't count. So Q, nobody needed to come. I didn't ask you to tell on folks. Yeah. <laughs> the person we have doing communion is ready. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Get our text from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning at verse 23, and the Bible reads, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you on this beautiful, beautiful Lord's Day to say thank you. Um, thank you for breathing the breath of life into us, Lord, allowing us to roll out of our beds and to come here and to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord, we thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace and your sacrifice. And we're thankful for Christ's obedience, Lord, to, to allow himself to be brutally beaten, Lord, and, and hung up on the cross. But on the third day, Lord, he, he rose with all power in his hand, Lord, creating a pathway for us to be saved. We ask for these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name, amen. You may break the first and second seal.
now reach the offering portion of service. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 through 2 reads, Now about the collection for the Lord's people. Do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day of every week, each one of you should set aside a sum of money and keep him with your household and income, saving it up so that when I come, no collections will have to be made. Let us pray. Let us bow for prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity that we have to just give back to your kingdom, Lord. We know that you have um, commanded us to give um, and step with our income. And Lord, we pray that we honor you in that because um, we know that you honor us every day with life and all the things and the roof over our head and the means to get here. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all ready for the word? Yeah. Oh, man, man, how we going? We're going to grab about 60, 70, so pray, man. Y'all ready for the word? Yeah. Watch ye therefore, you know not the day, the day you win. But when the Lord shall all your souls away, if you labor and strive and hold the right, one day you shall wear a golden crown. What are these lands I shall wear? I'm gonna wear.
Do something. Let the men lead a little bit. We did it at the first service. See if we can do it at the second service. Amen. Heaven's on the other side. 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 The okay, side. Man, this is your part. I will make it. I will make it. Heaven's on the other side. Come on, brothers, here the we go. Heaven's on the other side. 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 Okay, y'all got it. Now he's going to stop right now. You're going to say it. Yeah. Go. All right. The uh, the side. Home. 
One more time. The hour. Oh, heaven is on the other side. Hey, 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 heaven is on the other side. I'm going to work real hard so I can make it on home. I'm going to work real hard so I can make it on I'm going to work real hard so I can make it on home. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. I just want to give the brothers a chance to lead the songs. Amen. Amen. I heard you over there. I heard you over there, LaCour. Amen. Your solo is coming. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to... Uh, begin today's uh, um, uh, lesson with, a, with an apology on today. Uh, I was supposed to start a series today entitled uh, Five Loaves and Two Fish uh, because we had recognized that we had had a servanthood um, series this year. So we're going to start that today. Um, but uh, it's not ready. It's not ready. And so I didn't want to come up and not give it its full treatment um, starting today. But the reason I'm so excited to talk about servanthood um, is because of some things that our church is about to enter into. Uh, first of all, I'm excited. Those are the better glasses I just gave him, but those are my computer glasses. So, uh, these are my regular glasses, amen. But today we are we are going to enter into a partnership with the, can you, you can put that up, the Los Angeles Food Bank. I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, al Khaim, come on, give the Lord praise, amen. And I'm excited because we've been trying to find a way to, to, in a larger way, to serve the community. Now, in our groups and, and as individuals, and as a church, we do serve a lot. But we wanted some way we can corporately serve, and this is one way. Um, we can't have what you call a food pantry here. Um, it's, not, it's because we simply don't have the room for it. Every room in this facility is multi-purpose, every last one of them. So we don't have a place where we can dedicate just to put food and to refrigerate it, and we don't have that. But in a partnership with the Los Angeles Food Bank, uh, we can. And so I'm excited about it. And if you want to be a part of that, please see Sister Havia, just let her know. Um, our group, the, my, 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 one of my groups, the Gold Group, I know is already very excited, uh, amen, <laughs> about participating in it. And we have several others who are, and so if it's something that you'd like to participate in, personally let us know. But we're going to be doing this as a church, so I'm excited about that. We're also starting another partnership uh, with World Vision. Uh, and it's where they will, they're going to drive that big truck in front of our church. Um, and we'll be able to give the community a whole lot of stuff um, in partnership with World Vision. Again, um, we have people call us all the time, you know, I'm cleaning out my closet. Um, I would love to bring it to the church so you can distribute it to the community and as you see a lot of our members have very expensive clothing they just want to give it away and um, but we don't have any place to store that stuff so that's why we don't there's no needing us you know coming in this room be full of stuff uh, we had a, we had a gentleman two months ago give away about 20 pair of, of almost new jordans you know right here at the church um but yeah, that's what you need to tell you is for others, not those who can afford it themselves. <laughs> uh, but but we, had to, we had to bring it and then quickly give it away because we don't have room. But now, because of these partnerships, we can do some things, and I'm excited about it. 
And the reason we're starting this series called Five Loaves and Two Fish is because of a little statement Jesus says. Uh, we'll explain the text more next week. But there's a little statement where Jesus was there and he had been teaching at a big crowd of about 5,000 people. And uh, they were hungry and the disciples said, well, send them into the city. Let them buy some food. And uh, um, Jesus said, no. You feed them. And we'll, we'll talk about it next week. But that is the point. That we can do what we can do to serve others. Give the Lord praise. Amen. And I'm just excited about that. Amen. Today, though, um, we're going to be in a one-day sermon called How to Have Peace from Philippians 4, verse 6 through 9. How to have peace. Ah, I love the picture of that guy. He just reminds me of... <laughs> Marcus's wild days back in the 70s. Oh, Lord. <laughs> well, you ain't going to be here next week. I had to. <laughs> Amen. But how to have peace. We live in a world today where folks just feel befuddled. Anybody here lack peace? You just, you want some peace and just ain't got no peace? Well, that's the kind of world we, we live in a world today that pretends to be peaceful. Yeah. You know, it, it seems peaceful, especially in our country. It seems peaceful, but there's always this undertow of conflict and, and drama. I know some of you live drama free, free lives. Well, God bless you. Uh, my life is not drama free. I don't do a lot of drama, but that doesn't stop drama from knocking on my door. <laughs> drama does not have to be invited. Drama just shows up. Amen. And, and drama is the kind of visitor that won't just leave and get the hint. You know, drama knocks on the door. And then when you, when, you, when you don't answer the door, it starts pushing the button and starts talking to you through your camera. I know you're in there. <laughs> Amen. And so everyone is looking for peace today. We're even in a situation where there is a great statement among single men when looking for a mate. And they'll just say, I'm looking for a woman to be my peace. Yeah. If, <laughs> if I could just find a woman to be my peace, that's the one I want. Uh, <laughs> and, and then they find out, bless the name of Jesus. <laughs> Amen. That you can find a woman who is peaceful, but you still feel conflicted because our peace is not found in people. Our peace is found in God Almighty. So we're going to read a text today in Philippians 4, 6 through 9. And then I'm going to have to read 1 through 9 in order to explain it. And then we're going to make some application. So if you don't mind, let's, let's look at Philippians 4. If you got verse 1, amen. We're going to start at verse 1. If you don't mind standing to your feet as we read Philippians 4, 1 through nine. The Bible says, therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for 
my joy and my crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, Odeus, and beseech Syntyche, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with my other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand of God. Be careful or anxious or worrisome for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. <laughs> Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. If you don't mind helping me preach just a little bit, look at somebody and say, Peace, my brother, peace. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a sister, glory to God. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord and in the company of his people. In 1955, Dr. Nicholas Ridley was sentenced to be burned at the stake in England because of his witness for Jesus Christ. On the night before Ridley's execution, his brother offered to remain with him in the prison to be of assistance and to be of comfort. Nicholas Ridley declined the offer, saying, I intend, God willing, to go to bed and sleep as quietly tonight as ever I did. Because he knew the peace of God, he could rest in the strength of the everlasting arms of the Lord to meet his need. When you have real peace, it does not matter what your situation is. Because the peace of God is not dependent on happiness or sadness, the peace of God is rooted and grounded in the character of God. And so today, as we talk about how to have peace, I want you to remember two things. There's just two points, even though there's several ways to understand it. That God wants us to have the peace of God and that you need a relationship with the God of peace. The peace of God is your possession and the God of peace uh, is uh, your position. The peace of God is your possession. And the God of peace is your position. Y'all ready for this? Well, in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 1. The book of Philippians, it's, it's a book in the Bible written by a gentleman we call the Apostle Paul. And he wrote it to give us a centering in what we call the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, the gospel is the good news about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's good news because this news is an answer to every problem you got. Oh, God. You have problems, I got problems, but the answer is the gospel. I know we think it's everything else, but the answer is the gospel. And so Paul here says everything we do ought to be centered in the gospel. Everything. Our unity, our relationship. Everything is about the furtherance, the preaching, the, the, the uh, expanding, the exaltation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, so 
He comes here to Philippi, a church he loves greatly. And now in chapter 4, one of the central passages of this, of this book, he tells about a problem. There's these two chicks. Well, see, y'all can't say that because y'all millennials. So y'all got to be PC. We still say dudes and chicks and homies. <laughs> so y'all millennials, I know y'all got to be PC. These two young ladies. <laughs> That's Gen Z. Okay, my bad. <laughs> there was a problem with these two ladies. And so he says in verse 1, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved, and long for, he's telling how he loves them, my joy and my crown. Notice how much he loves them. Notice how he greets them. Wouldn't you love to be greeted that way? You come home and say, How you doing, dearly beloved? I was waiting all day. I long to see you. <laughs> You're my joy and my crown. <laughs> and so he said, he said, he said, so stand fast. Notice he says, in the Lord, my dearly beloved. Verse number two. He says, but but you got, <laughs> but I gotta beg you, Odia, and I gotta beg Santa K to get on the same page. Because if, if, if these two sisters keep warring like they're warring, they're going to tear up the church. If they tear up the church, it tears up the witness of the church. Because the most important thing is the spread of the gospel of Jesus. So nothing I do in my personal, public, or professional life should ever take shine off of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So y'all got to get it together. You Odia. Sent to Cain. Verse number three. I entreat you also, he's talking to a preacher now, my true yoke fellow, help these women who have labored with me in the gospel. Notice who they are. These women labored with him in the gospel. For us who are modern, more uh, contemporary thinkers, that's not a big deal for us. But this is radical talk for scripture. Because he is telling us that these sisters have been co-laborers with him in the gospel. The great apostle was in partnership in the spread of the gospel with these two ladies. He says, they're big in the church. Clement also. They were my fellow laborers whose names are written in the book of life. They are just as high as anybody else. And I feel a need to say that. Because sometimes in the church... We start to feel like, like the sisters can't do nothing but sit and cook. Bless the name of the Lord. As a matter of fact, that's the reason some folk are mad at me all across this country. Because I tell the women, you can do everything. Ain't but two things in the church that women can't do. Only two things prohibited. Just two. And of those two things, 99.9% .9 of men are prohibited too. 99.9%. .9 and so I don't put shackles on the sisters here. As you can see, our beautiful today and our wonderful destiny are running our services today. <laughs> Come on, let's encourage them. <laughs> we don't put shackles. So he's saying, listen, if these two sisters don't get it together, they're going to mess up the witness of the church. Well, why is that important? Well, because I don't care how much they can't stand each other. There's nothing more important than the gospel. Amen. Nothing. Amen. So get it together just while I'm flying through. That's the reason if your marriage is raggedy, you need to get that stuff together. Amen. If your home life is jacked up, get it together. Amen. If the only way you can deal with your issues on your job is to go out and turn up and get ratchet, get yourself together. Amen. Are y'all mad now? Oh, you want to get mad her? Because there's nothing that's more important than the gospel. And if what you do and how you do it takes shine off the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel of Jesus, then you need to get it together, man. And I do too. The reason is, if I don't get it together, the person who I'm on assignment to save 
is lost. No, not lost, meaning can't make it home. I mean, he lost, eternally lost, forever. It's too important to let my happiness get in the way of their salvation. Preach it good. Thank you. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And so what he does then is he's going to give them four admonitions. This is how he tells them to have peace. First, how to, how to fix this unity of the gospel problem in the church. Number one, verse number four. Admonition one, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord when, church? Always. Shout it out. Always. When? Always. Notice, we rejoice in the Lord always. Then he doubles down and says, just in case you didn't hear me, but like hear me before, second verse, like the first. And again I say, rejoice. When am I going to rejoice always? That lets me know my rejoicing is not based on my happiness because I'm not happy always. But I can still rejoice always. I can always rejoice. Because rejoicing is the opposite of complaining. Preach, hey good, thank you. Verse number five. I'm I, I, I got to get to the text. Number, number five. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. I, I need to. Uh, uh, there's a book. There's a red book in my, in my, because uh, I want to read the definition. I can just tell it to you. I'd rather read it to you. This word moderation in the Greek. I, I want to read it to you so you can get the full extent. And so you won't just say, oh, you just being mean. Yeah. Yeah. He said, no, the other one. The front pocket, yep. No, nope, not that one. Yep, that one. Yep. Yep, that one. Y'all clap it up for Kelvin. Appreciate you, sir. All right, this. What this is called is called the linguistic key mm -hmm. to the Greek New Testament. Okay. That's because the New Testament is written in what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Thank you very much. Verse number five. This word here. Ah. The word for. Moderation is the word. Um, epe case. It means reasonableness in judging. The word signifies a humble, patient steadfastness, which is able to submit to injustice, disgrace, and maltreatment without hatred and malice, trusting in God in spite of it all. So he says, how the church ought to be known which means you, come on, somebody say, I'm the church. I'm the church. Because you know we love that, we love that drag. I don't go to church. I am the church. All right, I am the church. Praise God. This is what I am the church. I, I am the church ought to be known. To all men. I want you to notice. He says it ought to be known to all men. Somebody said all men. Touch your neighbor and say, that means you. Woo! Because what people are saying, people say, well, you know what, you know what, uh, I, I, oh, God, oh, God, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it. People will say, you know, I would do that, but I just haven't grown to that point. This ain't about growth. This is about obedience. I'll do it when I grow to it. This ain't about growth. This is about the culture and nature of you as you, I am. You know, we run that back. Well, I don't go to church. I am the church. Glory to God. I'm glad you said that. Because that means hallelujah anyhow. Everything in this book, you want to do it because you are the church. Hallelujah. You want to fully represent God in everything you do, where you go, what you say. And he says, let your moderation be known to all people. What people ought, people ought to know is how humble I am. Oh, God. People ought to know how patient I am. Who? Patient when? When I'm mistreated. When I'm, when I'm mistreated. That's what they'll know. When I'm mistreated. They want to know how, when I'm mistreated. Not you just patient standing in a McDonald's line. Big deal on that. What about when somebody's cussing you out? What about when your kids are acting a plum fool? What about when your husband and your wife act like they ain't never seen God before? What about, what about, what about? Are you patient then? What about when your check is late? Oh. Hallelujah. What happened? They charge you too much on your bill. You still pay that? Because that's what he says. 
says you got to be patient. Amen. You got to be patient when folks treat you wrong. Okay. And people ought to know all men. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Y'all going to make me say something up in here. You're going to make me say something up in here. Do your kids know you this way? Ain't your kids a part of all men? Is that how your kids know you? Is that how your mama knows you and your daddy? Is that how your husband is? Is that how everybody, is that how your boss, is that how everybody knows you? You preaching, sir, thank you. Because he says, the Lord is at hand. This word angus means right here. The reason I can be humble and patient through mistreatment is because the Lord is right here. See, when I'm not patient, when I'm not humble, when I'm not walking in moderation, it's because I don't believe that the Lord is right here. I start to believe that all I can do is depend on myself. All I got is me, and so if you jump crazy, I got to handle you. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. But when I believe that the Lord is right here, I ain't worried about it, because God got me. Oh, God. Do I have one witness in here that understands that when the Lord is near, whew, God, come on, be thick in here today. When the Lord is near, when the Lord is near, it doesn't matter what you say. Because God got something for you. Hallelujah. I ain't got to run in my trunk. Say amen when you can. So it says, see, he said the Lord is at hand. This ain't my sermon yet. This is where the sermon starts. This is the, this is the third admonition he is saying in order to get this situation right. She's the first thing you gotta do is rejoice always. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. Then he says you gotta let your moderation be known to all people. Yes. Now he says you gotta be careful for nothing. Have no anxiety about yourself. Is the devil beating up anybody today? Yeah. Devil running all, all up and down through your house and running roughshod and making stuff happen. And you want some peace? He said, this is how you do it. He said, be careful for nothing. I want you to notice. He says, be anxious, be careful, be pressured for nothing. Now, I, I ain't got time to explain all context, but I do want to just give you this biblical understanding. Because this can mess up your head. Because this can make you start to think that I have no right to be concerned about anything. That's not really what he's talking about. He said when it comes to the care of your life and the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the purpose of your life, don't have no worries. He's not saying that if you have a sick child, you should be concerned enough to take them to the hospital. That's not what he's saying. But he is saying, all this worrying we're doing running around, we need to cut it out. He is saying that. So he says, instead of, I want you to notice, here's the, here's the opposite of worry. Just like he showed you the opposite of complaining, mm -hmm. here's the opposite of worry. The opposite of worry is in everything. Somebody say everything. Everything by prayer. I just, not yet, but there's a, there's a slide in there that got these four definitions. Just, not yet, but it's just in a second. He says, in everything by prayer. You see that? Yeah. And supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Now, so, so when I'm in a situation, instead of me allowing my Anxiety to mess up my relationship with you, Odia. What 
I need to do is drop that. And instead of, instead of dealing with her in anxiety, I need to be praying. I need to have supplication. And then I need to be thankful. And I need to let my request be made known unto God. Oh, God. Think about how much your life will change today. Who think about how much of a word that is for your life right now? That if the next time you were in conflict, instead of you worrying about the outcome of the conflict, you stopped and prayed. No, no, no. I'm not, I mean, like praying for real, for real, praying. And made it weird. They acting tripping out. And you say, hold up a minute. Hold up for what? Our Father. <laughs> Which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive me for wanting to strangle this person as you forgive those who want to strangle me. Don't let me really make it weird. In Jesus' name, amen. And they said, you finished praying? You finished arguing? No. God of our fathers. <laughs> Change how you respond to it. Amen. Amen. It'll change your life. Amen. You you have to, you have to, amen. Amen. You're on the, you're on the freeway. You know how they do. And they cut you off, which is bad enough. But they cut you off and slow down. You, 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 can, see, you can see I'm a fast driver. I don't, I don't mind you getting in front of me, but you, you, you need to keep it going, man. Say Amen. And they slow down. And you want to start talking to them in sign language. <laughs> no, no, no. Pray. Pray. Don't let your anxiety raise. Pray. Let, put those, let me show you these definitions. Pray. He says now, uh, uh, definition number one is, is four definitions. That is, amen. The first one, prayer. He says, in everything, but in everything, somebody say everything. everything. I want you to know there's no loopholes here. But in everything by prayer, in everything by prayer, not just sometime I pray when I feel like I can pray because I'm not really feeling like prayer. I'm not really feeling godly right now. This ain't about your feelings. This is about obedience. In, in the body of Christ, we got to stop worshiping our, our feelings. The reason we have so much jacked up lives in is not because the Holy Spirit is not in us, because we have the Holy Spirit. And we have the fruit of the spirit. We have joy and peace and love. It's all in there. But the reason we can't activate it, because it's not activated by feelings. It's activated by obedience. You activate the power of God by being obedient. Why do you think they say Jesus is Lord? It's Lord. Matter of fact, every time you say Jesus Christ, you're saying Jesus the king. The anointed one. Come on, pretend like y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all yeah, yeah. gonna make me think y'all believe like these crazy denominational folk be telling y'all the anointing is everything. Wait, that's the anointing on his voice. That's it. No, no, the anointing is the choosing of kings. Because they would take the oil and pour it over. That was the choosing of the king. It was the restoring of position, of power. And so we as Christianos, we don't walk in our own anointing. We walk in the king's anointing. We walk in an anointing of God Almighty. You don't want your own anointing. You want the king's anointing. Because that's a holy and everlasting and omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent anointing. That's an anointing that'll never wear out. It's oil that'll never go rancid. It's eternal. It's all powerful. It's greater than anything your daddy ever gave to you. That's the anointing of God. That's the anointing you want. It's the anointing that comes to the benefit of the Holy Spirit of God. That's the anointing. You don't want your own anointing. You want to walk in the anointing of the anointed one. That's the reason we're called Christians or Christianos or those who are in the anointed. But anyway, and so he says, by prayer. Prayer here, this pros prosuke, is the mindset of worship. So when I'm praying, y'all y'all learning? When I go into prayer, I got to fix my mindset into a worshipful mindset. That means prayer might take a little effort sometimes. 
And I want you to notice the context of this particular prayer. This is the prayer which is a response to my moments of anxiety. So if I'm in a if I'm in a position of pressure, what I want to do is take time and get my mind in a worshipful prayer. Telling God how beautiful he is. Remembering the great works he's done. He said, brother, I ain't all that deep. You ain't got to be deep. Can you say, God, I remember this morning I was asleep. But now I'm awake. And God, every minute, every second I'm breathing. And God, I'm in my right mind. And God, the sky today did not fall. And God, are y'all following me? Yes. You are awesome. Yes. You are amazing. Yes. You are high and lifted up. Yes. You are worthy of praise. Yes. You are the exalted and mighty one of God. I come before your throne right now. You ain't got to be deep. You just got to understand how, um, how worthy he is. Number two, he says about prayer and petition now. That's you express your need. You go from expression of worship to expression of need. I come here today, Father. Now, this is not specific prayer. This is a prayer of need. I'm coming to you today, Father. Yes. Because I'm, I'm in a situation that's beyond me. It's too much. I'm in a situation that's too much. And I need you. I don't need no man. I don't need no woman. I don't need a job. I need you. But now I don't need more money. I need you. Can I, can I help you with your, with, your, with your worship right now? Yes. And, and hear, me, hear me when I say it. A lot of y'all right now, when I said I don't need no money, couldn't receive it. You, you, you couldn't receive it. Here's why you couldn't receive it. Because money is your God. Money is what you depend on to supply your every need. You feel right now, if I just had a little bit more money, my life would be better. Yeah. I don't necessarily need a little more God, yeah. but I sure need a little more money. That's because money's your God. You worship your God. You fret over your God. That's what you could, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm not trying to be heavy. I'm trying to get you in a place where you can pray for real, for real, pray. Can I, can I help you a little bit? <laughs> you know, mess up my point. Uh, let me help you a little bit. The moment, the moment you think that God allows you to pray for Him from the second seat, you've lied to yourself. God's never second seat. God's never going to be like. Money, money, God. Never. And I know we think we do. We think, you know, God hears all of my prayers. He hears them. But it's like, what, you talking to me? Which God are we talking to? The one that's here, the one that's here, because because I don't do second seat. And that's reason, that's the reason the apostle said here, get yourself in the right attitude first. Fix it. I want you to hear me, hear me for real, though. I'm not preaching perfection. All of us struggle with everything. It's not about perfection. I'm talking about process here. Remember the apostle said, first, get your attitude right. So when I go in, I need to kick every other God out. I need to tell money, get out. I need to tell my lust, get out. I need to tell my flesh, get out. I need to tell my pride, get out. I need to talk to the God of the universe, not you. I need to tell him what I need, not you. Because this is in response to a situation that is messing over your purpose in life. Because anytime you're off purpose, everything else, oh God, I, I'm trying to move on. But anytime you're off purpose, everything else in your life is magnified. Because by nature, human beings seek after, strive for purpose. And once you don't understand purpose, everything else is magnified. Money's important, job's important. This is important. That is important because you don't know who you are. Yeah. And that's the reason the apostle says when you when you really 
want some peace. You can't find it in a person. You can't find it in things. You can't find it in money. You got to find it in him. Yeah. Yeah. And so he says, no, he says, he says, oh, now, get your petition. You come to him. I got need. But then he says, with thanksgiving. You can't come to God not thanking him for what he's already done. <laughs> but you also think of what he's going to do. See, now you're ready to ask. Because you're thinking of what he's done. You say, brother, I'm too, I'm too bitter. I'm too hurt. I'm too struggling. You're all right. Thank him anyway. This ain't about how you feel. This is about what you do. Y'all feeling this yet? Yeah. Do you not know you can come to God with a whole lot of unresolved hurt? Yeah. Stuff you stuff you've been trying to deal with. You in, you in counseling for this stuff. You know, somebody got you on a couch about this stuff. You know it's unresolved. Yeah. I mean, it's some deep stuff. You it's unresolved stuff. Yeah. You feel like I can't pray because I ain't nothing. Listen, if God waited for you to get yourself together, he'd never hear you. Yeah. So you you ain't got to get yourself together. What you gotta do is obey. So you come to him and say, thank you. I'm thankful Sister Susie's in my life. Yeah. I'm thankful Brother Kelvin is in my life. Yeah. I'm thankful Am is in my life. Yeah. I'm thankful. Yeah. Thankful why? Because Am is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Am I feeling great? No. I'm feeling like strangling this Negro. Because if you only say one more thing. Because that's how I feel. But God didn't tell me, fix your feelings. God said, instead of worrying about this fact, pray. Supplication. And say, thank you, God. Then he says, ask me for some specific. Then he said, make your request. Now you get specific. God, here's what I need. Here's what I need. But see, now you're in the mindset where you're not going to ask for something stupid. Oh, y'all missed it. See, y'all missed it. Y'all, see, see, cause, see cause if, if you don't get your mind right, you're going to start just asking for dumb stuff. God, give me more bullets. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come on, you know. You know I, God, in case I miss. Because if I see her trifling, you, you see what's going on? It's going to be on sight. God says, no, 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 no. Get it right. Come on, get it right first. Get your head right. So now you can pray right. But well, what's the benefit? Watch what he says next. Verse number seven. I think it's verse number seven. Use a coordinate conjunction, and. He says, and. You see that? Yeah. God, you're telling me that if I pray, meaning I get myself worshipful, right? I have supplication. I come to you pouring all my need towards you. And I'm thankful for what you have done and what you're going to do. And if I didn't tell you what I need, that I'm going to have your peace? Yeah. He says, yes. Wow. Notice, it's the peace of God. Yeah. Not your peace. God says, I'll give you my peace. Because my peace never runs out. Your peace runs out. Yeah. Say amen when you can. Yeah. Amen, don't, don't let me walk down your street. You already know your peace has a limit on it. There's just so much peace you got. <laughs> God, God says, my peace doesn't run out. <laughs> my peace does He says, the peace of God which surpasses how much understanding. You won't even know why you're getting along when you're older no more. I don't know why I'm not slapping you, Sister K. Because I know you deserve this slap. But yes, I have peace with you. Why? Because it's not my peace. You've already stomped on my peace and choked it out. My peace is done. But I'm not walking in my peace. I'm walking in the peace of God. Yahweh's peace. The peace which calms storms. The peace which makes the winds and the waves calm down. That's the kind of peace I'm walking in now. 
I'm not walking in faith's peace. I'm walking in the peace of Yahweh, God's peace. And it surpasses all understanding. It's more than my little mind can understand. This is the kind of peace I need. And I know you brothers are running around looking for a woman who can just be your peace. Glory to God. There's a lot of wonderful sisters out there. Amen. They are beautiful and wonderful, but they will not be your peace. They can be peaceful. But hallelujah. <laughs> My wonderful wife is wonderful and she is peaceful, but she is not my peace. God is my peace. You say, Brother Hagin, you just ain't romantic. I've been married 38 years. Make me go confident on y'all. <laughs> Telling you what I came to. She's still here, ain't she? Jokers. Exactamundo. Exactamundo. That's the whole sermon. Shoot, praise God. He says, what will happen? It will guard your hearts. That, that word is garrison your hearts. Garrison is probably the wrong word uh, for, for, for us. Garrison is a group of army people. That's a garrison. It's a grouping of army people. And what the Bible says the peace of God will do, J.R. is, is that, is that when you're struggling, the enemy will want to get to your heart and get to your mind. That's what he wants to do. Notice he's going to guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. That's what he wants to do. He wants to get to your heart. That's the seat of your emotions and your mind. That's the seat of your thought processing. He wants to get to that. What God says is if you will pray, what I will do is I will set up a garrison in front of your heart. Oh, God. So that when they try to get you, he can, he can throw his arrows. They can't get to you. He can throw his bar. He can't get to you. He can run your name, but it can't get to you. Why? Because you're guarded. Oh, God. Oh, God. He can do whatever he wants to do, but he can't get to you. He can't get to you. Why? Because he is guarding your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. It's God's peace. They can't knock out God. They can't put down God. They can't run shade on God. They can't fool God. They can't go under God because he's too deep. They can't go over God because he's too high. They can't go around God because he's too wide. They can't get to you because it is the peace of God which passes all understanding. You don't even know why you got peace. It's because God has you going. See, that's what he says, obey. Because you're fooling around getting your feelings and say, no, I'm going to do it my way. Yeah. Yeah. You have removed the guard. Mm. Not everything the enemy throws is getting through. Yeah. Not, on, not only you in your feelings, he's just throwing more wood on the fire of your feelings. Oh, man. And he's spiraling you in your own logic, making you try to figure out something you can't figure out. Yeah. And God says, pray, fool. You have power. Yeah. Why are you walking around? Whipping out. Pray. Yeah. Supplication. Yeah. Thanksgiving. Make a request known. And the peace of God. Whoa, make it known. Yeah. See, that's why you obey. All right, I got, I got three minutes to do these last couple of verses. Take your time. Oh, Jesus. So that's the peace of God. That's your possession. Whoa. You see that? That's what God gives you. But what God, not only would you have your possession, he also wants to reposition you. You see that? Yeah, he's giving you this possession, which is called a piece of God. But he also wants to reposition you. Y'all got a second? All right. Verse number eight. Watch this. He says, finally, this is the fourth exhortation. Or the first admonition on how to get this thing right. Yeah. He says, finally, the problem you're having here mm -hmm. is I need to get your thinking in the right position. Because as long as your thinking is in this other position, it really don't matter about your possession. 
because you're going to be always in warfare yeah. because of your position. Now, you can always fight because you have the power. And maybe you're just one of them people that like to fight the devil all the time. Wow. He, he says, but if I can reposition you, yeah. if I can get your mind in another position, yeah. then you have a possession and a position. Now it's really hard for the devil to deal with you. He says, finally, brethren, whatever is true. I'm not going to explain all these. I just don't have time to. Whatever is honorable, yeah. whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any virtue or any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, here's the command. Think about these things. The word think about, it means to meditate. This is the command. This is the command. The command is, I need to watch what I'm meditating on. Because what you meditate on is what's going to set your behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you meditate on it, all you need is opportunity to act on it. Mm -hmm. And so what he says is meditate on this. Can, can I just drop this in your spirit right quick? We got any parents in here? Listen. Yep. God bless you, first of all. Because this is a, let me God bless you. Because this is a hard time to raise kids. Listen, hey, listen. Yeah, it was tough when I was younger. We had a lot of tough stuff. We didn't have as many opportunities as y'all have. But we didn't have a lot of crap to deal with y'all got to deal with either. So, so God bless you. Because what I'm going to tell you is going to be really hard for you to hear. But you're really going to need to, for the vast majority of the time, take almost every device from your child. I know, I know. Oh, the second thing I'm going to say is harder than that. So, here's why. Because those devices are setting their meditative state. When I was coming up, this is not better or worse, so don't, we're not comparing here. I'm showing you something. When I was coming up, you didn't have to worry about, my mom didn't have to worry about me listening to Sexy Red. You say, y'all didn't have sex or eight. The devil is a lie. We had Betty Wright. We had a whole, <laughs> we had a whole lot of nasty folks. The difference was, huh, it was, come on. Come on. We had Luke. Shoot. <laughs> we had a whole lot of nasty stuff. So, no, that wasn't that. But my parents could make a buffer. Between me and that. Yeah. You, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's hard. So, so, so don't hear me. I'm not judging you. I'm telling you that means you gotta make choices our parents didn't have to make. And if you want your children to have the right kind of mindset, you you can't let them be victimized and preyed upon by the enemy. That's the easier one. This is the harder one. You need to put your phone down too. And your devices. Yeah. Up until about 20 years ago, I'm 62 now. Up until about 20 years ago, I had literally never seen actually pornographic material. Never. You know, my, my granddad and they had little Playboy books that he had places. No, that, they don't talk about it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Never. 20 years ago, we had our first website as a church. It's gone now. But our first website, connected to that website, was a discussion board. This is before my space, before that. Everybody had discussion boards. I know y'all, it's just old stuff, I know. Your chat room, right. Everybody had them. So we, we put biblical things on there for going and discuss it, right? Well, it was hacked. And so now, every day, I had to 
go on our chat room, on our discussion board, and erase 30 to 40 porn sites every day. If I didn't do it every day, it would be 400 on there. So I had to do it every day. You say, well, that's not that bad. Well, technology's changed a little bit. But back then, as soon as you clicked it, pow, it came up. Oh, see, y'all see? 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 Immediately. No, 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 they, no, no, they, that's not the worst part. They had it so that you couldn't close the window. See, y'all, 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 y'all use all this, this, y'all got this wonderful technology. You got so much control. Well, back in the day, I'm embracing it, clicking it. So I had literally had to go and unplug. Oh, okay. And start over. So that one's gone. I do like 30 times. The safeguards that are needed for us to be in the right position are disappearing. You got to watch yourself. See, right now, y'all know stuff I never knew. Because not a stuff that was in the club is normalized in your marriages. I just be real with you. Y'all have not normalized stripper behavior in your marriages. And then try to put a scripture on it. Don't, don't, don't make me start saying nasty stuff. Don't make me start. Well, it's in the Bible. Not what y'all talking about ain't in the Bible. And, 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 and say it's in the Bible. You didn't get it from the Bible. got it because you remember when you was in the strip club. And they, so I told you to say amen. I'll move on from this. Amen. I'm, I'm just saying that's why I say you got to be a lot more serious about this thing. Because if you're not serious, let me tell you what happens. When you need to do, number one, to get the peace of God, you can't do it. Because you're out of position. God wants you to position yourself. The problem is now I need God, but I can't think godly because I can only think selfishly. Because I've never been in a place of pure worship. Mm. I've never ever just given God my need and said, God, you take it. I, I'm not going to handle it. I'm going to fully trust you. You've never been in a place where you were just thankful. Thankful for the grits. You, you follow what I'm saying? You were in a place where you just gave God your every need and let him have it. So when he says reposition now, you push back. Because you don't want to just think about true things. You don't want to just think about honorable things. You don't want to think about just things. You don't want to just think about pure and lovely and things that are worth praise. That's not what you want to think about. You want to think about sexy red. You want to think about what they're doing in the club. That's what you want to think about. And right now, the God that you serve is pushing back against this sermon right now. He's in this room right now telling you you can't do that. That's too much. He's trying to make you a holy roller. He's trying to take over your life. And those of you who know, you died on a bit more care about running your life. I just love you. You run your own life. I got plenty of life. Jesus, I just got home from four weeks away. <laughs> I need to go someplace and sit down. I got plenty of life. Don't let the enemy lie to you. I know somebody wants to be free today. Let me give you this last point. Verse number nine. I had a whole lot of real good preachy stuff in here. But I just had to talk to y'all. I just had to tell y'all this stuff. All right. He says, verse number, verse number nine. What you have learned. Here's your key. Here's your key to repositioning. The key, the key to accessing uh, um, your possession was the prayer. Here's your key to repositioning. Okay. This ain't real popular either, but so whatever. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, do those things. Practice those things. And the God of peace. You see how it's flipped it? Yeah. He goes from the peace of God to the God of peace. He goes from the peace of God to Jehovah Shalom will be with you. How do I, I want God to be with me? How? It's by discipleship. 
Are you messing up? He says, what you have learned, right? Received, right? Heard, right? Seen in me. In me. Oh, y'all missed it. Because we're Americans. We just, you know, we can just Google it. That's how I learned it. That, that way I can receive it and hear it. I just pull up YouTube and I can just hear it that way. I can just watch it on. No, 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 no. You can't get it that way. You have to do it by hooking yourself up with somebody who is higher or who knows. I don't like the word higher because it makes it seem like there's some kind of hierarchy. That's what I'm talking about. Somebody who's been walking with God more than you. And then you got to imitate them. Another very un-American thing. Because we think we all got to be unique. I need to be my authentic self. Oh, I praise God. All y'all love paganism. I know. Glory to God. Study your Bible. What God says is imitate. Paul says, I imitate Christ. Timothy, I need you to imitate me. And Timothy, I need you to teach the church to imitate you. That puts a whole lot of pressure on those people up the line because they got to walk right, talk right, sing right, pray right. But if you want to, if you want to know how to do this thing, if you want to know why I'm not growing, it's because you believed that you can somehow disconnect yourself from the body and from discipleship and still have this position in the peace of God. God said it don't work like that, homie. Yeah, yeah. Then you wonder why I have no peace, why I can't be positioned when my relationship with God ain't right. It's because you're not in discipleship. Mm. Appreciate it, good. Thank you. I know that's a word for somebody today. You say, well, what's the hope in this? You didn't hear it? There's the hope. The hope is that the peace of God is available. And that the way to get it is super easy. You just got to be willing to do it. I disciple people all the time. I'll be starting another group next year. And I'll be requiring of them two or three hours of study every don't worry, most folks don't make it. Two or three hours of study every week. To be with me every week. To be accountable to me in their life. Most folks don't make it. Because we don't serve the same God. But it's cool. And it is, it's cool. Because it doesn't, it doesn't mean they're heretics. It just means they got to get to the point where they, where they fully lead out of the God. Amen. 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 But then the point is, then all of a sudden they start saying, you know what? I'm growing so much. I'm growing so much. I'm growing so much. Well, yeah. Then what they want to say is, you're a great teacher. No. No, I'm not. That's not why you're growing. You're growing because you obeyed. And when you obey, God repositioned you. And when he repositioned you, he started to pour into you spiritual resources. And so now this fertile ground just starts to bloom and blossom with the fruit of the Spirit that's already in you. Yeah. It's not about the amazing teaching. You can be a horrible disciple as long as you're faithful. God does the rest. This is a spiritual thing. Amen. Get a lot of praise in this place. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm way long today. I promise I won't be way long next week. But praise God. I just I need to tell y'all that. Because I, I know how much hell some of y'all are going through. And it hurts my heart to see how much you're struggling. It does. It hurts my heart to see how much you're struggling. But I know you don't have to. Because God is saying, I've given it to you, man. I've given you everything you need. Come on, be with me. Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus. You say, Brother Hagin, you know, all that stuff you're talking, it sounds cool. But how do I get it? Well, if you have never been baptized in water for the remission of your sins, you come by hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why Jesus? Because Jesus' name is Emmanuel, God with us. That's the position you want to be in. What baptism does is it puts you in Christ so you can have the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. If you're ready for that today, what will happen is we're going to stand in a minute. That's our culture. We stand. We're going to sing. Uh, Brother Cornell's going to sing a song of encouragement. And we, we just say, either you can walk down here or you can raise your hand. If you raise your hand, I'll come get you. One of the brothers will come get you. Or one of the sisters will walk down with you. And we'll ask you a simple question. Do you believe 
Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you believe that, we'll baptize you today in that water right there. I think that, that's a tub right there. A, we call it a baptistry, but it's just a big old thing with water in it. Yeah. And you say, is it magic? No, it's not magic. What happens is when you obey God, that activates faith. Yeah. And because of your faith, God starts to do stuff. Anybody believe God yet? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I believe that God will do everything he says he'll do yeah. and nothing he says he won't. And if God says that he will save me, I believe today, you can be saved today. And maybe you're a Christian today, and you have no peace. I'm going to give you a secret. You have peace. You just haven't activated it yet. And if you want to grow in your peace, come on, walk in discipleship. Listen, I got some dudes here and some ladies here I know can disciple you. I know they can. I make Carnell disciple you. You say, make him, yes, he's a disciple. Some things he got to walk in if I say it. Now, most things he don't, that he does. <laughs> that he does. Because that, that's, not, that's not a little thing we play with around here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And, and then you walk in a peace which passes all understanding. Come on, stand to your feet. And I want you, as you're standing, I want you to think about it. Think about what God wants you to do. And if God is calling you, if God is calling you, we ask you to come to him as we sing this song.